Hi, hello, and welcome tonight, a special live edition of 805 Sports Talk. For the next 30 minutes, we're talking rodeo. The Santa Maria Elks Rodeo is underway. This is the second night, and we're here live to bring you some of the excitement. The excitement and the crowd are building as we get ready for the second night's performance, and we're happy to be here live. Now, as I said, this is the second night. Thursday, yesterday, the whole thing began. They had two performances, and it all kicked off early in the morning. 6,500 kids were on hand for the annual Minetti Mini Rodeo. You can see the crowds there in these pictures brought to you by Jason Anderson and Braxton Carroll. Look at that crowd, a full arena of children. It was all about the kids, 6,500 of them on hand. First thing they saw was skydiver Kent Lane flying in one of the world's largest American flags. That thing is gigantic, and we had a special crew from Vandenberg Air Force Base to catch that flag, and it got the show off to a rousing start. And then, of course, that was time for the competition. Team roping was first out of the chutes. It was great. You had uh, young kids uh, from all around the Central Coast and even one from Bakersfield. Uh, Caden Cox and Chance Raffoni, a couple of Arroyo Grande high schoolers, won that event. And uh, it was Caden's last time before he graduates from high school and is too old for this. Then came the breakaway roping, and that was broken into two different age groups. And Chance Raffoni from Arroyo Grande High School won the older group. And then uh, Sutton Mang from the Janata School won the younger. And then you get to see a little bit there of saddle bronc riding now that was done by the only grown-ups or older people in the group saddle bronc and bull riding the broncs were ridden by david tanksley and tim dittrich their students at cal poly and the bulls were written by jake peterson and ali alan williams also students at cal poly but you see the power there of the of the uh, bulls and the uh, buck and broncos but they treated the kids to that and then it went back to being just kids events the rest of the way. Now there's a couple of clowns. Uh, they had special <laughs> guest clowns and one of those was me. The other is Jason Anderson, the guy that took the pictures, who's still taking the pictures right now. But the kids, they go out for mutton busting and the chief there, Tony uh, Rodriguez from uh, one of the local radio stations, Tony Gonzalez from one of the radio stations, is uh, was calling the action on that and then barrel racing a three barrel clover leaf and that was broken down into age groups with children under six getting the most attention and uh, Jameson Branchino was the winner in the youngest age groups and he's uh, got his second belt buckle as a five-year-old uh, and it's not as many as his dad world champion five-time world champion steer wrestler Luke Branchino, but they broke them down into under six and seven to nine. Uh, Sadie Grant won that group. Josie Pereira won the 10 to 13s. And Carrie Huguenard from Orca Junior High won the older kids 17 and under. So it was a really great time for the 6,500 kids to get to see maybe for many of them their first rodeo. And I'll tell you, the, uh, the the kids loved it. You wouldn't believe the roar of the crowd. They outdo the grown-ups. Now, the arena last night was filled. The arena tonight will be filled. But when these girls were racing down that uh, final stretch, you could hear the, the kids just roaring louder than the grown-ups. And then, of course, the Flying Cowboys, a fan favorite. Cotton Rosser brings the Flying U Rodeo cow Flying Cowboys in every year now a motorcycle specialty team and you can see the jumps that they make I mean they come roaring through the arena uh, and just go up these ramps and over and they do tricks like you would never believe if you haven't seen them you really should come out and see them now Cotton Rosser is the man that brings those Flying U uh, Flying Cowboys to the arena and he owns the Flying U Rodeo Company which provides the rough stock, those bucking broncos and bucking bulls, and uh, and they are the meanest, arneriest buckers in the in the world. And he's uh, the man behind the Born to Buck program. 
He's a rodeo Hall of Famer. He's a delightful guy. And uh, he always takes time out to talk to me and teach me about the rodeo. And yesterday, he was no different. He spent a few minutes of his time, and everybody wants his time to talk to me. So let's listen in to what Cotton and I had to talk about. Uh, Cotton, thank you for joining us. Well, it's nice to be with you again. And what wonderful tent, all these wonderful new things that the Elks provide this year. Man, what a great week it's going to be. Now, you're a Hall of Famer, a multiple Hall of Famer in the rodeo, and every place that they have a rodeo Hall of Fame, you're in it. Well, I've uh, been awful lucky. Yeah, but I, you say lucky, I say good. <laughs> and, and the people that choose the Hall of Fame have chosen you very wisely. Now, well, thank you. We see the, you're, you're the, for people that don't know you, you bring the rough stock, the bucking bulls and the bucking horses, right? Yeah, we're there, you might say, they're stock contractors that bring stock. We're rodeo producers. We try to bring, along with all the stock, some of the entertainment acts, things like that. We want, and we kind of co-produce the rodeo with the Elks, Tina and Bob Tallman and Wayne Brooks and all your committee. We try to give them our experience that we've accumulated in 60 years and going to 50 rodeos a year to the Elks and show them how to put on a bigger and better rodeo with their help and our help. Now, you've uh, started many years ago a program called Born to Buck. Yes. Uh, would you their... explain what that is a little bit? Well, we're one of the originators in that. We started back in the 60s breeding a cranky mare to a cranky stallion and uh, getting a cranky colt and feeding them and growing them until they're five years old and producing our own bucking horses. Years ago, we used to use wild horses and broken and work horses that wouldn't pull a wagon, outlaw horses, you might say, but there's just not a supply of them anymore. So in order to breed bucking horses, we had to go to breed bucking horses. To provide adequate stock, we had to go to breed bucking horses and bulls. Now, we've had many conversations over the last 16 years, mm -hmm. you and I. Yes. And um, among the things we've talked about is uh, the fact that your bulls seem to be winning when it comes to the cowboys. Well, yes. When I rode bulls and Vidal Garcia and all the Gary Judd Lefew and all the old bull riders, we, they had nothing like the bulls that we have today. These bulls today are bred when we got the pedigrees of their mamas and pedigrees of their daddies. We've had bulls in it. One like Reindeer Dippin, who we just retired. Four years in the PRCA, never ridden, never ridden. Uh, in the PBR, two or three times they rode him. Justin McBride, the many times PBR champion, said I was on him nine times and I couldn't even ride him when he didn't have his best day. But yes, the bulls today are ranker than the cowboys are they just it's you know they just and then we, we grain them both and take care of them and condition them and they're ready to go and of course they only buck eight seconds and that seems like not very long a time but it's a long time to a bull rider sitting on top of them holding on now you've told me that you bred a better bucking bull so what are the cowboys going to have to do to catch up well they have videos they study them they do everything but i don't know what they're going to do uh they're they're getting better bull riders all the time better equipment they're they've introduced the australian bull riders into the united states and they're a, they're a tough lot of course they come from a country which the, our money is so much better than theirs and they can win so much money they're they're tough competitors, and in, in the PBR, they really have, have dominated a lot of world champions. They're Brazilian bull riders, but it's it's a battle for the bull riders to keep up with the bulls. Now, this is a family affair and a love affair for your family. I've seen your wife here. You have one of your sons, a daughter. Uh, you're very involved in the rodeo for the whole Rosser family, right? Well, we are very involved. In fact, our whole family, of my five children, and my two ex-wives and my present wife for the night last 37 years. We've been all been involved in rodeo and you know it's been wonderful. I've raised five good children and uh, two, two grandchildren. All went to Cal Poly. 
and uh, they've had a wonderful life and raised around livestock, taking care of animals and greeting people and get to go to all these different cities. And you know the people, the cities we go to, like for example the Elks here in this town, you take the finest people in this town are Elks. And these people are all here to produce a great show and take care. You ought to saw the kids we had out here today. I never saw so many yellow buses and one, I don't care where you go. And the grandstand, I don't know where they got it, where they put the rest of it, but the grandstand was chuck full. We had a wonderful hour and 20 minute show for the kids, little elementary school kids today. But the people we meet in rodeo were all volunteers. If it wasn't for volunteers, rodeo would not be successful. Elk clubs, lions clubs, Kiwanis clubs, Mormon church, sheriff posses, and of course you got the mid-state fair up there with all their big, big things. But uh, rodeo is really a family affair, and it's, it's family with the committees, family with our family, and even family with the cowboys. We don't get rich at this, but I'm the richest man in the world with memories and friends. All these awards I've gotten. I've been grand marshal in here parade for three times. People, I've been here so many years, people forget. But I have enjoyed every minute of it. It's just a great thing to do to come back to Santa Maria and see these hardworking elks. And by golly, this rodeo growing and growing. It's getting bigger and better every year, and so is this wonderful facility out here. Cotton, it's always a pleasure and a privilege to spend time with you. I look forward to it every year. Thank you very much for Thank being with you us. And it's nice to be in my home again in Santa Maria with all my college buddies, men. Cotton Rosser, one of the most impressive people I have ever met. I've had the privilege of knowing him and hanging out with him and actually going on to his ranch up in Marysville and hanging out with 440 of the meanest bucking bulls, but they're all pussycats when they're at home and they're not in the arena. Now, this is all the Elks Rodeo, 73rd Annual Elks Rodeo, and really the man who's responsible for it and has been for the last several years is Phil Harwick. He's the president of Elks Recreation, and Phil has taken time out. He's with me live right now, and Phil, thank you for joining us. Oh, it's my absolutely my pleasure. I'm happy to be here. Now, the crowds have been phenomenal. We know you had 6,500 kids here for the mini rodeo, but last night a huge crowd. Tonight, what are you thinking about the attendance? Tonight I'm thinking we're probably going to be sold out. This is an exciting event. We've been working on it for years. It's one of the fastest, most ex fastest moving, one of the most exciting rodeos I've ever seen. It starts out with a bang, and it just keeps on going. Now, we'll talk about that in a second, but there's a lot going on here. There's special uh, presentations. They had a cancer benefit yesterday, and you got this awesome midway. So there's a lot for people to do in, in addition to just watching the rodeo. There is. We have some fantastic vendors on the midway, as well as the Forest Service, the sheriffs, a bunch of race cars, fire engines, fire trucks. Pretty cool. Uh, Really good food. A lot of really good food. Uh, on the west end of the Midway, we have a, a, a free concert before every rodeo. Good bands. Directly across from it, we have a huge new uh, bar and libation building. It's pretty neat. Directly behind me is our dance tent. After every rodeo, we have a free dance. Good, really good country bands. Another big bar. We have uh, a chance for you to join the Elks. I'm looking at them right now. You can come up here. If you want to be part of this, instead of just watching it, you can be part of it. Now, they have already been here to say, tell Phil he's got to plug the membership booth. So it's right here when you come into the uh, arena at the Elks Unical Event Center. You can sign up. It's not that expensive. No, it's not. It's a hundred and a quarter a year. I'll tell you, I belong to organizations where I paid that a month. And uh, not by accident, it's right where you walk up to the grandstands. You are not going to miss it if you come to this rodeo. All right. Well, and, and it's a fun group. And you guys work really hard. Uh, you know, Tina Tanasha, who never wants her name mentioned, is a huge reason why it's successful, as are you. But now let's talk rodeo. I mean, you've got the extreme bull ride, or string bronc riders. you got the Women's Professional Rodeo Association, and you got the Professional Cowboys Rodeo Association. So that's three different organizations you got to bring together in one arena and make it all like clockwork. It is like clockwork. These folks have been working together for years and years, and they travel the West together. 
they're good at what they do. They're very, very good at what they do. We have some of the finest performers in America here in Santa Maria right now. Uh, Sunday evening, we'll have a, a show that's never been seen on the West Coast before. We have a French bull jumper. We use a special, super athletic, mean little bull. Now, this guy gets in there, and the bull attacks him, and he jumps over. He does headstands. He, he hops off of their horns. He does all kinds of crazy stuff, and he does this for a living. He's a French cowboy, and all I can say is they must have a high unemployment rate in France because it's a crazy job he has. Yeah, but it's very entertaining, as are the Flying U Rodeos Flying Cowboys uh, and the uh, uh, Justin Rumford, the five-time now world champion rodeo crowd. you got a Hall of Famer in the announce booth. I mean, it just stars everywhere you look. Oh, we do. We do. Uh, we have Wayne, Wayne Brooks and... Uh, Bob Tolman, probably the best two rodeo announcers on earth. Uh, a rodeo clown is, is a, he's five times champion. He is so darn funny. He does things that you wouldn't think a guy his size could do. I once see him attach himself to the VIP tent sideways like Spider-Man. It was hilarious. And then he did a pole dance. Talk about a shaking tent, but it was funny. So there's more than just the rodeo, but the rodeo is the star of this performance. Phil Harrick, president of Elks Recreation, I thank you so much. Maybe you'll come back and join us Sunday night. We're going to do it again as the rodeo wraps up. But thanks for being with us. Oh, I'd love to do that. Come on out. This is easily the best show in this town, best show in this part of the coast. All right. Thank you, Phil Harrick. Elks Recreation President and our guest here on 805 Sports Talk, the special edition. Now, we were talking about some of these events, and one of them, or several of them, are rough stock events where you have to be able to hang on tight and actually make it look easy for eight seconds. And for those guys, I think it's the longest eight seconds of their lives, but they love it. They just think it's a great ride. And then the other events, the team roping, tie-down roping, steer wrestling, those are all timed events. And there's got to be somebody in charge of keeping time. Well, there is. There's a whole crew, actually. And that crew is led by National Finals Rodeo t Finals timer, Sherry Gibson. We talked to her all about it. Sherry, welcome, and thank you for joining us. Oh, you're so welcome. Now, you've been working the rodeos for a long time. You're a national final rodeos timer. Yes. Uh, and you're one of those people behind the scenes that is so valuable. They can't do the rodeo without you. So tell me a little bit first about what the timer does. Well, we actually time every event, whether it be the rust sock or the timed events. We have stopwatches. We actually work uh, the console for the scoreboard. And uh, how quick our reflexes are really determines how the Cowboys actually will place on, on, on participating. So it's really important that we take our job super serious because their livelihood depends on us. Now, you don't do it alone, though. You're not the only timer, right? There's always somebody with you? There's always two timers at every Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association Rodeo, but at the National Finals, there's three timers. So, yes, it's, it's always at least two up to three. And now you're aided by modern electronics, like, what is it, laser lights for the barrel racers, or what is that? Well, we have an electronic eye that is used in the barrel race. They do use an electronic eye in some um, other team roping and roping events at, at other non-sanctioned events, but we use an actual old digital stopwatch that you can buy in the store, or in the rough stock events, we use a sweep watch, the old hand that goes around the clock. Uh, you, you do, what, 60 or so rodeos a year? Um, no, actually, because once you start a weekend of a rodeo, you have to finish it. So I actually do 30 rodeos in a year. So the Cowboys, they're here and gone, but you don't get to leave early. No. Uh, typically, we roll into town about Monday and then stay through the weekend till Sunday when it's all over. And then just go right to our next event. Wow. So you've got a, a motorhome or an RV? We have a motorhome that we tow a Ram truck behind and uh, put a golf cart in the back of it. My husband says we look like the Clampets. But it has to be a Ram truck, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. My husband used to work for Ram Rodeo. That's how we met. So, uh, yes, it has to be a round truck. So you're 
rodeo lifers, though, right? Yes, I'm a, a gold card member of the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association. I've uh, been a timer for 28 years. So, and my husband ro used to ride bulls, so he's a longtime rodeo person too. So, uh, they have to sit tall in the saddle or non saddle if they're bareback riders. The rough stock riders have to make it through eight full seconds. Doesn't sound like a long time, but for them it must seem like a lifetime. Oh, definitely it seems like a lifetime. And, and talking about embracing technology, especially here, we'll have three judges. So when the contestant either touches the animal or he gets bucked off, the, the clock will actually stop and we'll have what exact second he bucked off. So it could be like a 5.2 um, or it could be a 7.99 and he would get a no score. Now, but... The other events, it's fastest. So the you, the rough stock, they have to make eight complete seconds. That's the limit. If they do it, they get a score. If it's the speed events, the team roping, tie-down roping, steer wrestling, barrel racing, as fast as you can go, right? Correct. Fast as you could go with the parameter of not breaking the barrier, which would give them a 10-second penalty, which gives the animal a head start. So uh, our job is to keep track of all those statistics of whether they broke the barrier, add that to their final time. But there's also time limits. So uh, in the in the tie-down rope end, they have 25 seconds to complete uh, roping their animal and tying it. In the steer wrestling it's 60 seconds and in the team rope and it's 30 seconds so if they stop the clock at 30 exactly on they get a time if it's 30.01 it's a no time okay sherry gibson you're an nfr timer that's as good as it gets making the national finals rodeo and i uh, thank you very much for taking a few minutes out of your day i know how busy it is and i know you've got to get ready for the next performance uh and without it without you they're not going to get it done so thanks for stopping by thank you so much all right welcome back sherry gibson she's great and she works really hard at her job now one more thing we got to tell you about that's uh, controlled chaos or maybe organized mayhem or pure craziness the first event every night at the Santa Maria Elks Rodeo is extreme bronc riding and these guys take bronc riding to the extreme it's all organized by the king crazy Santa Inez's own Bill Egg and we just talked to him let's hear what he has to say so Bill yes you are uh, one of the people that really is a prime mover in extreme bronc riding yes uh, it's been known as a lot of things over the years uh, and the point of that is it's been a lot of years matter of fact you've told me several times it's one of the original rodeo events That's so true. tell me a little bit about the history of it and then we'll ask you to explain exactly what extreme bronc right i know you've taught me how to do it i can't say that i can we do did it, that yes but uh, uh tell okay. me a little about it we'll talk about the event okay so the event came from ranch work, right? And when rodeo started, what we know is rodeo today, not just two ranches getting together competing, but where they actually brought the cowboys in, they paid an entry fee, was around the late 1880s. By the late 1890s, you had Cheyenne and, and uh, Prescott and a lot of these name rodeos today already in existence. Soon after the turn of the century, you start picking up Pendleton Roundup and Ellensburg and Calgary and all those. So we knew it was a, I mean, it was a sport to stay. Okay, so there were three original events, and the extreme bronc riding was one of those because it was used on the ranch. You went out into the corral, you roped the horse you want. If he wouldn't stand, so you get a saddle on him. Somebody reached up, put an arm over his neck and held him down, and you put a saddle on him. And um, then you got aboard and you bucked him out, and then you went to work. You know, and that's just the way it was. So it turned into a competitive event real fast. Now, it was known as wild horse racing originally, and then it was team bronc riding, and our association is the Extreme Bronc Riding Association. Now, it looks like, well, you call it, uh, what, organized chaos? Controlled Con chaos. Yeah, it's mayhem is what <laughs> it is. You've got a three-man team. They have to, it's a wild horse who is not necessarily the friendliest guy in the in the arena. Uh, you got three guys that have to stop, 
saddle and one of them has to ride them through the start finish line. Tell us how that all happens. Okay. Well, first let me explain something. These are not wild horses. Because a lot of times when that is said, that's why the name was changed, because they think we're going out and rounding up Mustangs, and that's not it. These are unbroke bucking horses. So these are animals that have been raised on the reservation, the ranches, the bucking programs that they bring in and use in our event as the horses are growing up. It teaches them a lot of things. One, it teaches them to stand in the chutes. It, the guys are handling them. They're putting halters on them. Really calms the horses down so that by the time they get to the bronc riding, they aren't hurting the bronc riders in the chute by flipping over or rearing up or jamming them against the gate. So that, I think, is a plus. But so, so you got a three-man team, they're in the chute, they have a halter and a lead shank on him. And the lead shank can be up to 16 feet, but most of the guys run about 13, 9, 14 feet. Okay, you want less of it under your feet. You're all on the rope, the shank, fire the gun, starting whistle, whatever, you open the gate and the horse comes out. So you have a hold of it, you aren't chasing him around the arena. At least you have a hold of it till he comes to the end of that shank. Well, you have a hold of it, but he's also got a hold of you. That's right. You may so, lose him right at there, but okay. And so I've seen your guys, not just your team, but all the guys over the years, get dragged all through the arena. Oh, yeah. It's not like just stop them. No. It's, well, I, I for the crowd, it can be very entertaining. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what you do. Let's take a rope and put it on the back of a motorcycle and then have the motorcycle take off and you try and stop him. That's what it is. Yeah. You gotta move with him to start with, you know, and, and slow him down. Now, not all horses are the same. They're like people, too. Some horses may come out three jumps and just stop and say, I'm not going any further. Some horses, like you said, they come out, hit the end of the shank, and they're gone. And you got two guys dragging across the arena trying to stay with him long enough they can slow him down. So the, the object is, like you already said, can, uh, contain the animal or control him, put a saddle on him, and buck him through the finish line. Now, if Monty Roberts, the horse whisperer, was doing this, he would do it in about an hour and 20 minutes to get out the horse all settled. Here at the rodeo, at this rodeo, if you want to get first place, you better be less than 45 seconds getting through that barrel, or you're not going to get first. And if you want a place, you better be less than a minute, so, somewhere in the placings. Uh, you have a two-minute time limit for the whole race yes but you if you get to that point you're way last place by the yeah and everybody who places on the finish line under two minutes will get a credit for that towards the average but in the goal rounds it doesn't pay for every team that crosses only so many placings in a goal round so you want to get there quickly and you've got now what we're really going to do is make it difficult because we're not going to have one team doing this. We're going to have six to eight teams doing it at the same time in the same arena. So here at Santa Maria this year we have six to eight teams every night depending on how the draw went. So let's say we have eight teams. So we have eight horses and 24 cowboys all in the arena at the same time trying to get to that finish line for first place. So it can be crazy at the time uh, they're doing it. Now, you mentioned the horse whisperer. He's actually a local guy, and I didn't say this at the beginning, but you're a local guy, too. Your whole family's involved in this. The sport's been growing, uh, and you're right from, from right here in San Inez. Yes. Yeah, we're in San Inez, and all my children have been raised there, and we've been in San Inez for about uh, 45 years. And it, it's growing. Yes, it is. And at one time, you know, a lot of rodeos had it, and then it kind of tapered off a little bit in the 60s and the 70s, and then it boomed up, and then it went back. But now it's on the rise again, and it's uh, being picked up by a lot of rodeos. And one last thing. I see the crowds. They just roar. They love watching this, don't they? Um, they love watching us getting drugged. Yes, they do. They love seeing a cowboy bucked out the back door. No, it's exciting because, and I'm not being critical of anybody else's event. But if you watch a bucking horse come out, and you watch the next one and the next one, you've probably seen the bucking for that particular performance. The horses are pretty much going to buck the same on the same night, in the same arena, out of the same shoots. Okay. When you've seen our event once, you haven't seen the second go yet. It's going to be totally different when it comes out. Horses are going to react different depending on who's handling them, what, if it's daytime, if it's nighttime, how they broke out of the shoot, what shoot they were in. So you can always expect the unexpected when you're watching it. 
All right, well, I expect to say thank you very much, Bill. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for being with us today on our edition of our special rodeo edition of 805 Sports Talk. Nice to see you. Thanks. Thank you. So Bill Hagan is about to take to the arena, but we are back live, and as I said a couple times, you can come right in here. First thing you can see is the booth where you can join, and to prove it, I've grabbed Jim Chase, who's running this booth, to tell you how easy it is to become a member of the Elks. Jim. Hi, uh, all you have to do is stop by, talk to us. We're right here in front, membership committee. I'm just an elk, I like, and I just want everybody to come by and join us. I can tell you all the good we do for the country, for the neighborhood, for the community, and for the veterans. And you can become part of this part, Elks Rodeo team. They can become part of the Elks Rodeo team. They can be a, a volunteer for all of the activities we do in the state, the community, the nation. It's involved in all the kids' activities, especially veterans. So come on down and see Jim and his friends. Come on down and see the rodeo. It's kicking off right now. And we're going to be getting out of here, but not before we tell you to come back and join us Sunday night at 5 o'clock. We'll be live again to wrap up the whole four-day Elks Rodeo weekend. But thank you now for joining us. Until Sunday night, I'm Elliot Stern, the sports editor of your Santa Maria Times. Thank you for being with us, and good night, everybody.